Welcome to part 7 of my series on the Lucas Lemmer primality test. Um, today we are going to be finalizing our proof that if the um, basically Lucas Lemmer primality test says something is prime, then it's prime. Um, later, I, I think I'll, I'll also do like where if it says it's not prime, then it's not prime. So, if, if you remember our strategy that, that we covered in t uh, number 6 is we're going to assume that a test says it's, it's prime and that it turns out not to be prime, we're going to prove that's impossible. Meaning that the test is prime, it has to be prime. Um, so therefore, yeah. Um, what what we have is, if you remember, we we did some stuff in the last video. Let's cover that really quick. Um, pretty long video last one. I think this one may be slightly shorter, but still pretty long. Um, so we we defined a group, or we find a set, and then we define a group inside it. We figured out the it has less than or equal to this number of elements. Um, we talked about this and this and, and then we we figured out uh, about these okay Sorry. um right okay so now what we are going to do is we are going to we're, we're basically going to find the order of w okay so let me explain. So the order of a group is the number of elements in that group, right? Now, the order of a single element, you may think like it doesn't exist or hey, it's one uh, because it's just one element in, in itself. But no, that, that, that's, that would be too boring, right? So the way they define it is it's basically you construct a group. So here, I'll give an example. So say we had the group 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, where those were the remainders when you divide by 7, right? Um, and then what we have is we're, we're basically... We want to find the order of five, okay? All right, so this is Rainer's modulus seven. I want to find the order when I multiply by five. Well, maybe, maybe five is a bad example. It's a little simple. So let's let's do wait no no five five will work fine. Sorry. Uh, so five, okay? So first of all, what is five to the power of one? And but actually, actually what is five? Five five is just five, right? Now, what's 5 times 5? And remember, I'm not talking about real life. I'm talking about in this group. 5 times 5 is going to be 25, but then I take the remainder. Uh, when I divide by 7, I get uh, 3. Sorry, 4. 4, not 3. Um, it's 4. And then 5 times 5 times 5. And then I multiply 4 by 5 and get 20. Because 5 times 5 was 4. So then 4, therefore, if I'm multiplying by 5, I get 20. Which is going to be 6 in, in this group. Um, and then next, I'm going to multiply again. Okay. Uh, and six times five is going to be thirty. Okay. And that is going to give me a remainder of two. Yeah, we have two more of these. So then, if if I multiply five times, um, it's going to give me uh, ten, which has a remainder of three. And then finally, if I multiply six times, it's going to give me a remainder, or it's going to give me 15, which has a remainder one. So, uh, here, I'll, I'll show you. So, we went 5, 4, 6, 2, 3, 1. Um, and we're not going to go into this, but just notice that uh, these cover all the numbers except for zero in this. Um, but basically, what we know is that... Um, if we kept on going, we would come back to 5, right? If I did this 7 times, I'll multiply 1 by 5 and get 5, right? Because 1's that identity. And then I would keep going in this pattern forever. So there's no need to go any farther. But So how many was this? This was 6, right? So we say 5 to the power of 6 is is 1 in this group. And because uh, 5 times 5 times 5 times 5 times 5 times 5 was 1. Okay. Um, let me think. Okay. So, yeah, so we, we sort of almost defined a group. Okay, so what I mean by this, and, and this is pretty cool. So imagine if we yeah, took, okay, actually, perhaps this is a bad example. Well, perhaps it's a little bit of a bad example because the subgroup is the same size as the big group. But I, I think you guys will be able to handle it. Um, So I have this, right? Um, so I, I have the, these, right? 
Oh, I, I, so, you know, you know, technically, the zero shouldn't be here if I'm doing a multiplication group, I don't think. So I'm gonna ignore that zero for now. So these are all the remainders without the zero, and this forms a group. Because if I multiply two non-zero remainders, I'll get a non-zero remainder. Uh, so now what I'm gonna do is, I see I have these. So if I was to multiply, so, so now I have a group, right? Of sort of the fives, and the number of elements in this group, right? is going to be the number of fives until you get back to one. Okay, so let me try to explain this in the straightforwardest way possible. If I multiply five by itself a bunch, eventually I'll get back to one, okay? And that forms a group, because if I have three fives and I multiply by five fives, I'm gonna get eight fives, which will bring me back to here. So now I have a group, and the number of elements is the number of fives I have to multiply to get to one. In this case, it was six, okay? And because of that, this, that means that we have a group. And if you remember what we talked about, that means the order of the group must, of the subgroup, must divide the order of the group. So therefore, there's six of these, so that must divide um, the order of this group. Okay? And the, and the order of this group is going to be six. So in this case, that worked out. Right. So now, we're, now what we're going to do is, so we see... And this logic works for any group. If I, so, so and, and you can just think about this a little if you want. If I have a group and I have some element in it and I keep on multiplying it by self and itself forever, or eventually, assuming you get back to one at some point, that is going to form a group, right? And, the num and because the number of elements in that group is the number of times I had to multiply it to get back to itself, and because that has to divide it, that means um, div divide the order of the big group, that means... The number of times I multiply an element by itself to get back to one must divide the order of the group, the big group. Okay, right, so now that I've talked about that, we can get back to what we were talking about before. Let me see here. Okay. Um, is this the right paper? No, I, I think that's. Okay, sorry. I'll start on this paper. Let's keep going on this one. Um. Okay. So now, now what we have is so. So we've talked about that. If you remember our previous formulas. Oh, yeah, sorry, the paper was hiding over here. Um, in our previous formulas, we have this, right? Notice it's not one, and then this one, sorry. Notice it is one, okay? And this is in our group, x star. Um, and notice just a quick proof that this element o, is in x star. Um, w is in x star because when um, multiplied by this element, it... Um, this this is this inverse right right here, um, because when you multiply them you get this which is one. But that, that's just a side note, just a, a, a super proof that W is definitely an X star. Um, so now what we have is yeah. So we know that W. Okay, so look look at this. This is real good. So the order of the group, right? So you you notice um that. Yeah, so the order of the group, but um, but do I even need this thing? Give me one second. Um, huh? Oh, that, that's interesting. It, it may be uh, I didn't need all that stuff about group theory, but it's it's definitely very essential information just to have in general. Um, so, yeah, I think you may be able to do it out without, but it'll be a lot harder. I mean, now you're more acquainted with groups. So, uh, anyway, so we know that, I, it, it may be that you do need, I don't know. Um, so we know that W to the power of 2 min is 1, right? Um, and what this means is that the number of times you have to multiply W to get 1, it must be dividing 2 to the N. Because whatever that number is, all its multiples and only its multiples are going to give you 1. Um, because when you... Well, I actually, th this is... If you remember and you're having questions about why this is, I'm going to cover something in incredibly similar just like in a few minutes. Um, so we know that it divides 2 in. Yeah. Right? But it does not divide 2 in minus 1. Because if it divided 2 in minus 1, that, that would mean this was 1, but this is not 1. Therefore, it divides 2 in, but not 2 minus 1. Okay? Whew. Well... So now what we're going to do is we are going to um, prove that, therefore, it must be 2 to the n, okay? Alright, so 
let's call this number j, okay? So j divides, and remember, j is the order, yeah, um, yeah, j is the order of the group, or oh, sorry, of, of, no, it's the order of the element, right? And we, we talked about what that means. Uh, so j divides 2 to the power of n, um, is, is that right? Yeah, um, but j does not divide 2 to the power of n minus 1. Well, yeah. Um, so notice that, that that means then that little symbol right there means that not divides. That. Okay. So yeah. So now what we have is um, this is sort of funny. The proof that j must be equal to two to n involves group theory. It's just really simple. It's really nice. I'm just going to show that to you really quick. Um, so what I have now is imagine if I take the the group. Basically, now I'm using addition. Uh, that's my operation. Uh, imagine if I take the group 0, 1, 2, all the way up to j minus 1. Using addition, sort of like the remainders uh, when I divide by j. Okay. So, whatever the remainder of 2 to the n is when I divide by j. Right, so, so, if I'm going I'm to draw this. So, you give me one second. All right. So, this is my group. Right here. All right. Alright, so now I have um, some element in here which is going to be. Alright, so let me think. Yeah. So I have some element in here which is not zero, which is going to be two to the n minus one. Okay, and because if it, if it was zero, that means because this is the remainders when I divide by j, it would mean that two to the n minus one is divisible by j, which we said was not true. Alright, so therefore there's one of these non-zero elements, which is that, right? And then when I double that, I I get um yeah um and when when I double that, I get oh so so let's call this element B okay. So this element, which is the remainder of two to the n minus one, when I divide by j, is going to be B okay. It's going to be somewhere in here. It's not zero as we talked about. Okay. Now let's look at the multiples of B okay. Um. Well, actually. to the n and j divides to the n minus one. Yeah, I think this will work. Um, so so let's look at multiples of b. So if I have two b and three b, that 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 right. Well, we know that um two b um this this right here, this is just two to the n. So therefore, this must be zero, right? Right. So um. I, I guess it doesn't quite work. Um, let me think. That's what this one. So, so yeah, I, I guess one way to do it would be to say. Let me think. Okay. So if J divides two to the n minus one, um, uh, sorry, it does not divide two to the n minus one. And that means um, it can. Um, I'm just gonna assume the fundamental theorem of arithmetic for now, um, because I don't. I really don't want to prove it because it's really long for now. So that means that. Yeah, yeah, uh, and maybe in a later video I will prove it. Uh, you can look it up if you want. The fundamental uh, theorem of arithmetic says that every um, basically number has unique prime factorization. We talked about prime numbers. It means that all the numbers are a unique way of multiplying primes to get them. So 2 to the n minus 1 is obviously just multiplying n minus 1 twos, and 2 to the n is obviously multiplying n twos. Okay. Um, so therefore, the in the only if you think about it, the only numbers that can divide uh, 2 to the n is a power of 2, because if it didn't, um, when you multiplied it by something, it, it would always have a non 2. Um, if you don't understand that, whatever. Just anyway. So j must be a power of 2. If it was smaller or equal to 2 to the n minus 1, then it would divide 2 to the n minus 1, which as you see right here is impossible. This, this little symbol means not, it does not divide. So therefore, it must be 2 to the n. If it's larger, of course, it can't divide something smaller, though. Unless the thing is 0. It's not. All right. So therefore, j is equal to 2 to the n, okay? So we're getting close to our contradiction. 
Let's see how I'm doing on timing. Uh, yeah, I think this is good. All right, so we know that so two to the power of n, right? That that's the order of this group. Or yeah, oh, sorry, of of this element. Okay, and yeah, and. It's pretty obvious that if the order of an element divides the order of the group as we talked about, it can't be bigger than the order of the group, right? So therefore, um, it has to be small. So two to the n is smaller um, because that that's the order of the element. Um, what was the element? Oh uh, yeah, so that's the order of the element w, right? So it has and w is an element of x star, so it has to be and it, and it has to divide the order of x star, so it has to be smaller than it. Or equal to. Let me, let me put a little equals because it could be equal to it. That is definitely possible. Um, right. So I have this. So now, if we if you remember, we, we talked about how w star of the order is at most um, q squared minus one, right? Yeah, I, I think we talked about that. Um, let me just double check. I'm not making mistakes. Yeah. Uh, okay. So. Um, what we have here, okay, so notice this, right? This is smaller equal to this. This is definitely smaller than q squared, right? I mean, that's just trivial math, okay. I'm oh, sorry, I put that in the wrong place. All right, so remember, q was the smallest factor of, um, of our, our Mersenne, right? Uh, of, the, of the Mersenne number. We said it had to have a factor, right? It's the smallest factor, which means that, therefore, because, because of that, it has to, right, um, because the Mersenne um, number is not prime, as we assume for this, uh, it means that um, basically, therefore, it must have two, two, at least two factors. So let's say we have two of those factors, okay? Now, the smaller one times itself is smaller, or, or maybe equal to if they're the same size, the smaller one times the bigger one, which is the original number. So therefore, the smaller one squared um, is going to be less than or equal to the total um, number, meaning that q squared is less than or equal to mp. Okay, so let me write that down. Oh wait, sorry, I, I haven't I haven't defined mp. It's it's just how you write like the beef machine uh, or something. Sorry, let me use my notation in my letter. Um, so to do in minus one, is that, is that right? Yeah, I think this is right. So therefore, th this was the number seen because q squared is the smallest divisor, and because it has at least two divisors, um, when I multiply those two divisors, it must be larger than this, or maybe equal to this, um, meaning in, when I multiply those, it's gonna be this, so therefore this is less than or equal to this, meaning two to the n is less than two to the n minus one, which is obviously impossible because a higher power of two is larger than a lower power of two. And so therefore we reach a contradiction. Be so what we did to reach this contradiction is we assume that if that is the test will output, yes, this is a prime, and it's not a prime. So therefore, if the test outputs, yes, this is a prime, then that means that it has to be a prime because if it was not a prime, it, we would do all this logic and it would be contradiction. So therefore we have proof that when the Luke Slimer primality test says that a number is a prime, then that number is a prime. Thank you for watching. Um, I hope you enjoy the video, and goodbye.